jumps out to you about the get your offense? I think they're uh, I think they're tremendously uh, experienced. Um, a lot of those names are names that we've been seeing for many years. Um, it's it's uh, it's a huge advantage to them to be able to work together for so long. Um, uh, even though there's a change in coordinator, I think a lot of the concepts are, are still very similar. You know, the, there's a great probably probably I would imagine a great rapport with the quarterback and receivers. Um, uh, they're a good offense. They're a really good offense, and and uh, they complicated with the things that they do and they execute it well. I know the motions and shifts that they do can sort of confuse defenses at time. Uh, what have you seen about how they use that, I guess, to their advantage? Yeah, you, know? you hit the nail on the head. It's hard to it's hard to dig into formational tells and it's hard to dig into um, splits and you know things that, that we typically would do just because they're going to be shifting around and, and moving around all the time. And um, that's, that's the... Uh, that's part of their mo, you know. That's that's how they, uh, that's how they think they they did it back in the day when they probably didn't have the personnel that they do now, and and now that they have that personnel, it makes it it uh, a little bit more scary. Because this is two and five, if you get the sense that your locker room's not taking them lightly, though. Oh, no, no, no worries there. <laughs> but, but with that two and five record, they've got some work to do if they want to kind of salvage something from this season. Is this? And expect the unexpected type of game. Oh, yeah. Anything yeah, it didn't have anything to do with them, and 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 honestly, we're not talking too much about what their record is, or, or you know, we know that they have the ability to beat anybody. Just as West Virginia had the ability to beat anybody, just as Colorado had the ability to beat anybody. It's that's what the Big Twelve is right now, and and I don't think that we're um, by any by any means feeling like we're high and mighty just because we won a few games. I think we we know that we got to go out there and earn it every week, and. Um, you know, I, I think this means a lot to uh, to our locker room. Uh, means a lot to the Kansas kids that we have on our team. Means a lot to the community. Means a lot to us personally. So uh, our guys will be ready to go. What do you think your secondary has been able to create turnovers the way it has the last few games? Um, guys are playing with good technique. I think guys are, uh, um, you know, guys are finishing plays. You know, I can I can think back to a few uh, situations earlier in the year where we maybe had balls in our hands that didn't didn't uh, didn't finish them. Um, and now we're just putting them away. And, and I don't think there's any magic formula. I always kind of say that about turnovers. I think they come sometimes uh, in bunches, and sometimes they, there's a little bit of a drought. And, and uh, I think our guys uh, have it on their heads all the time, and, and uh, they're, they're capitalized. we got some good playmakers back there. Aside from tackling, what do you need to clean up in the QB run game from <clears throat> defending that? Because that'll be a threat again this week. Yeah, I thought we we took some poor angles last week. I thought we overran the the ball uh, on a number of occasions. Um, I thought we got maybe a little bit greedy in some of our rushes uh, at times. Although that got corrected um, and, and it got much better as the game went on. But you know, rushing past the quarterback and doing some things with our lanes that were allowing a guy that we knew was going to get out and go to get out and go. And, and it isn't any different this week. You get a tremendous athlete back there at the quarterback spot. And if we're not smart in how we attack him, you know, he's going to get chunk plays. Did you coach that game any differently in the second half after their quarterback was no longer available? You know, we'd watched uh, their backup quarterback and we knew who he was and we knew they didn't change much. I mean, he was a good athlete um, the same way. We knew they were going to run quarterback draw. We knew they were going to do the same offense. He'd been in there. Um, now I have a lot of respect for Garrett Green. I think he's a, a tough competitor in, in that. But I, we did not change one thing. We knew, I think, going. I mean, that that hit at the end of the first half happened right in front of me. I saw it and I saw him get up, and I thought, you know, that might uh, that might be a problem for them. And sure enough, in the second half, he didn't come out, and we didn't we didn't uh, we talked very little about what we were going to change. The Bo Palmer injury. Who needs to step up? Uh, yeah. Just to replace him. Yeah, we're we're. Uh, um, We've been we've been repping Terry Kirksey all along, um, and uh, and Terry's played a little bit in some games, and, and he'll play uh, Mike in Bo's stead. Um, we'll we'll have uh, in some of our situations where we only use two linebackers, that gives us, um, you know, a rotation now of of Austin Romaine, Austin Moore, and Des Purnell, um, and we'll probably try to take some of that off of Terry's plate a little bit. Uh, so uh, we feel we feel good about what we have and. Um, it's really unfortunate for Bo. My heart goes out to him. It's a Kansas kid. I know how much this game means to him, and I know how hard and, and well he played in this game last year uh, when we were over in Lawrence. So, um, you know, great kid, great leader. Um, my heart goes out to him. It's, it breaks for him on, on something like that. That's just, 
you know, the second time that that's happened to him, and, and that's uh, um, for him and his family, man. I, I just hats off for all he's done for this program. Daniels had a pretty good game against Houston. What, what have you seen from him on tape? You know, he's had he's had good, kind of quietly good games against a lot of people, and I, I just he's. He just they just executed really well against Houston. Um, I thought they were they were firing on all cylinders. They were playing confidently, and um, and they got going early and uh, and they kept it on them. And Houston really didn't have any answers. And so he's got an incredibly strong arm. He's got uh, uh, obviously mobility and the ability to run. He knows what they're doing. They don't put him in tough situations where he's got to see a whole bunch of different things. I think he knows what he's doing when he lines up. I think the shifts and motions probably help him to see maybe what the defense is doing a little bit. So um, you know he, he's got a he's got a lot of advantages, and so he's he's and, and he's got the athleticism to take advantage of him. Austin Romain kind of been piling up tackles the last few games for you. What's he done that's maybe impressed you or surprised you this season? I think he's he's really stepped up from a um, knowledge standpoint. One guy that that I wish everyone would emulate is Austin Moore, just in how he prepares for a game. I mean, he'll sit out there on Thursday practice. If you guys were to see today, and I know things change, people rarely show you the same thing twice. But he'll he'll call out things just that, and he does that through just intense film study. And what's cool about Austin Romain is I think he's going to be the guy that's going to carry that on because Austin's kind of taking him under his wing, and every time he comes up here. He brings Austin Romain with him, and I think that that, that duo is, is going to carry on the tradition of our linebacker room when Austin Moore leaves.